Hi guys, welcome. I think we'll we'll make a start now. Um, good afternoon. Uh, welcome. My name is Robbie Keswick. I'm the campus manager here at Australian Pacific College for Sydney CBD. Uh, I hope you're doing well. Uh, obviously, it's been a difficult couple of months for everybody, um, especially for international students like you guys. Uh, you may have lost your job. Uh, you might have had difficulties paying rent. Uh, you're probably worried about family back home. Uh, and for some of you, your school might have closed down as well. So it's obviously a lot to deal with in a short amount of time. Uh, so we're here today to show you our college, uh, show you how we've been helping our students in the last few months uh, and help you make the move to APC if that is what you decide to do. Uh, so throughout the presentation, if you have anything you would like to ask, just use the Q&A button at the bottom of your screen if you're watching on Zoom. If you're on Facebook, you might not have that option, but um, you can comment or do whatever you do on Facebook. And uh, if you're on your app, uh, if you're on your app on your phone, it'll, there should be a button down the bottom there for Q&A. So any questions you have, uh, we'll get to our moderator, Rachel, we'll get to them all at the end of the session. Um, we'll have a little bit of a, a Q&A. Uh, and if you can't stay with us to the end for whatever reason, please go to the website apc.edu.au and uh, there's a live chat function in the bottom right hand corner of the screen uh, and someone will talk to you immediately and help you with any of your questions. Uh, so uh, let's go right ahead. Uh, why would you choose to study with APC? Uh, I mean, there are lots of colleges out there. Why are we special? Well, we've been doing this for a long time. Uh, the school turns 26 this year and uh, we've got a wide range of courses, quality teachers and trainers and 15 pathways to universities, of course, students from all over the world. And I'll just very quickly introduce one of the co-founders of the school who is joining us right now. David, are you there? Yes, I am. Thank you, Robbie. I'll just turn your video on and you can say a quick hello. G'day. Thank you so much, Robbie, and welcome to all. Yes, 26 years. I'm still very excited to be part of this community. And coincidentally, the average age of our students is around 26 years. And that has hardly changed over the years, unlike my age. Um, and it's, no, it's so great to see so many of the students here today, uh, even with such short notice. And I think this shows the level of interest and I guess, unfortunately, the anxiety during these crazy times. Look, our main goal is to ensure that for everyone, anyone willing, we're here to support you, we're to support your continuation of your education journey in Australia. Now, we're very mindful that we don't want this health crisis to become an economic crisis too. So, nor should it be a reason for you to give up your dreams in Australia. So, as long as you're willing and you allow us to help you, we're here for you guys. Uh, this doesn't mean that you don't have to do much to get through your courses. Yes, they're fun, they're engaging, There'll be lots of opportunities to socialize, which is really, really important. But they, they're also very challenging. And um, as long as you're willing to put the work into this, I assure you that you will get a lot out of it. So if you're willing to roll up your sleeves, our current students, our staff, the peer learning support that we have here, we're here to make sure that you can get through and have an amazing learning experience. Back to you, Robbie. Thanks, Dave. Thanks a lot. Um, so uh, why would you choose to study uh, Sorry, no, <laughs> our courses. Let's move on to the next slide. Um, here are our courses. You can see them all. Uh, lots of various topics, uh, travel and tourism, social media, marketing, uh, both graphic and interior design, at TESOL. You'll see English down the bottom there. Uh, our sister school is English Unlimited, where you can do all levels of general English, IELTS, Cambridge. Uh, we also have our own in-house course and method for intermediate and upper intermediate level learners. Uh, which is getting incredible feedback. Uh, it's called Everyday English. Uh, my background's actually in English teaching and I can say with absolute certainty that if you come to English Unlimited, you'll have a great teacher and you'll have a great time. So um, a quick question for you. Uh, so these are the courses that we have here at APC. Um, which course or courses are you interested in? You should have a poll popping up on your screen any second now. What are you interested in studying here at APC? So you should have some options there. Oh, the answers are coming in, good work. So wow, we're getting a lot, of, a lot of travel and tourism and hospitality. A bunch of social media. Social media marketing is a really popular course. Design as well, that's good. Actually a very interesting, interestingly, very even spread. All right, we'll give you another 
Still waiting for a few answers, so we'll give you another 10 seconds. Yeah, more are coming in now for travel, tourism, and hospitality. Pam, who you're going to meet soon, will be very happy about that. All right, we might, we might wrap it up there. The winner is travel, tourism, and hospitality. That's nice. All right. Um, so uh, we'll move on now. So we'll give you a quick breakdown of how we have dealt with COVID-19. I mean, obviously... Uh, this has affected everyone. It's affected you in your life. It's affected me in my life. It's affected the way businesses run. It's affected the whole world. And we realized quite early on that this would affect our students in all kinds of ways. Uh, and with all our decisions, uh, we've always prioritized the health and safety of our students. Uh, and we've done our best to respond to many of the challenges that the virus has presented. Uh, here, you can just see listed in this slide a few of the actions that we've taken. And we'll go through them one by one in the next few minutes. Uh, so with border closures and immediate loss of jobs, obviously I'm sure you remember what was back the, about the 20th of March, just everything shut down. And um, there was no government support uh, to ensure that you as students had you know, money to pay for food and accommodation, uh, you know, hospitality, people just lost their jobs overnight. And we were the first international college in Australia to reduce tuition fees by introducing COVID-19 tuition fee relief. So essentially, as soon as this happened, we dropped our, our fees immediately to make sure that you guys had money in your pockets. Uh, and that has extended. So the cheap fees have extended all the way through until the end of 2020. So that's for any study you do at APC or English Unlimited until the end of 2020. That study is going to be at the dis this, discounted, uh, this discounted rate. It doesn't matter if we, if we come back face to face. Um, or if we stay in, in the online mode, the VLE, the virtual learning environment, those fees are going to stay at their lower rate until the end of this year for study in this year. Uh, we've also got payment plans for anyone who, I mean, if you want to break up those payments and make them more manageable, we have payment plans as well. Um, so uh, we'll move on to the next slide. The, the fees are really simple for the rest of this year. It's a thousand a term for VET. Um, and we do, at our school, we do four terms a year. So we're about halfway through term two at the moment. We'll be going into term three in July. Uh, so we have four terms a year and it's it's $100 a week for English. So you'll note there on the slide that design and TESOL are a little bit more expensive. They're 1500 a term. And these are premium courses. They cost us a bit more to deliver. And so we have to charge a little bit more for those ones. Um, in terms of your physical safety, so this is what we've done financially, but in terms of physical safety, we moved into the virtual learning environment straight away uh, to protect the health and safety of our students and staff back in March. So right now, all classes are in the VLE. Uh, and in most cases, we're going to keep them there until the end of the year. Of course, things can change. There might be individual classes that come back online a bit earlier, but that right now, that's the plan to stay online until the end of the year. Uh, and to tell you a little bit more about the virtual learning environment, the VLE, um, which again, we're getting great feedback from our students at the moment. I'll introduce you to our acting program director for VET, Ron Newman. Ron. Thank you. Um, thank you, Robbie. Um, yeah, I just want to talk a little bit about the VLE and about um, how we're delivering our quality education experience. We're, we're basically using a combination of Zoom and uh, for, for all face-to-face -face classrooms. And we're supporting that with our Google Classroom and uh, Omnium Classroom for documents, for chats, for submission of, um, of assessment tasks. Each of your subjects would be broken down into two hours of uh, live Zoom lecturing and two hours of a, uh, a live Zoom tutorial. And the reason we split it up that way is because during the lecture, you're being given really the, the expert knowledge, the understanding of the general concepts of the subject. And in your tutorial, we're, we're looking at helping you with uh, the personal attention, understanding the topic and helping you um, manage your study through the, the subject. Um, if you're ever unable to attend a lecture because the lecture might, um, might coincide with some commitments you have or some work uh, time that you have, if your rosters were to change at work, for instance, those types of things, all of our lectures are recorded and, and we aim to have them up online in the Google Classroom within one hour. Um, maybe sometimes we'll be a minute or two late, but that's our aim. 
And so if you can't make the lecture itself, it's available as a recording. Um, the trainer will make sure that during your time with us, that you understand what assessments are required. Uh, David talked about working hard a little bit earlier on. Um, yes, it's important to work hard, but you'll have the materials in front of you and your, 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 your teacher will make sure that you understand your assessment task and help you understand where to submit them and, and how to submit them. Um, I guess for me, that's about it, Robbie. So I, I hand back to you. Awesome, thanks, Ron. Um, so that's, I suppose, the academic side of the virtual learning environment. Uh, but of course, being, you know, being stuck at home for weeks on end has had its own challenges. Fortunately, it seems like we're getting to the end of that now. But um, from the first day of VLE, we have also had a social club for students to get together and do activities like yoga and karaoke on Zoom. I know it seems like it's not really the type of thing you might do on Zoom, but I promise you can do it. And uh, our students have been getting together and, you know, getting getting free of that isolation, I suppose, and, and connecting with each other uh, on Zoom outside of the classroom, which we thought was really important. And um, yeah, it's been going really well. So uh, we've got 11 campuses. So we'll move on. We've got 11 campuses. Uh, we've got one in Brisbane, one on the Gold Coast, two in Melbourne, and we have five in the Sydney CBD, as well as one in Bondi and one in Manly. So if you are based in Sydney and you are looking to move to a campus where, move to a school where we, maybe we have a campus near where you live, then it's quite possible that, that we might be able to accommodate you. Um, we have a lot of campuses and it's also free and simple to move between them. So, I mean, we know that students sometimes want to move to Melbourne or whatever it is and we can accommodate that and we can usually transfer that course, you know, quite simply. Um, that said, we're talking about campuses, but of course we're in the VLE right now. Uh, we are taking steps towards going back to face-to-face -to -face again. Um, with select campuses now open for students who need a safe and quiet environment to connect to the internet. Uh, you know, maybe you want to come in and download one of your lectures that you missed. Um, you can come and use our internet instead of using your data, you know, whatever you want to do. Um, maybe you need to print. Um, right now, we're just keeping it like this with social distancing and hygiene protocols in place to keep it safe. Um, but of course, as the weeks go on, we'll be addressing that situation and, and probably opening up more to the extent that we can and to the extent that it's safe. Um, so and in the meantime, before we open all the way back up again, uh, we're making sure that our students are getting as much support as possible. So I'll talk a little bit about our study buddy program. This was an, an initiative that David, who you met at the very start of this presentation, was actually his brainchild. And um, he, it was his, his sort of idea. Uh, to, to find a way to encourage students to help each other and to, I suppose, enrich the student experience that way. Um, but at the same time, provide some financial support because, of course, so many international students were facing hardship. Um, so many, you know, lost their jobs. And so this study buddy program was uh, introduced as a way to, uh, to connect people. The way it works is uh, if you applied for the study buddy scholarship and you were successful, you would get a group of students um, who you would be responsible for staying in contact with, saying hello, um, just helping them with uh, how the VLE operates, for example, um, and just giving them an extra layer of assistance. Um, and I think sometimes student to student uh, assistance and help and support is, is a bit different from what we pro can provide as a college. I mean, that said, at the same time, we've been, uh, so those students, who participated in that program if they were, they got a scholarship of $600 for uh, being a study buddy and, and helping other students. And so that went a long way to helping them with their fees at this difficult time. So that was another thing that we were able to do for our students. We're really proud of that program and it's, it's in its first term right now and it's going really well. So, um, but at the same time as study buddy, now of course, uh, we have also created new ways that students can reach our student care team. So we now have all kinds of ways you can reach us. We have uh, live chat, which we talk about a lot. So apc.edu.au, bottom right hand, I'm pointing to the right or the left, sometimes you get back to front. Bottom right hand corner um, is uh, where you'll find our live chat uh, button. And between the hours of 8.30 and five, uh, Monday to Friday, today, um, after this presentation, you can go straight there. We're gonna keep it open until six for an extra hour. Um, if you wanna talk to them, um, about anything at all, about enrolling, you're welcome to do it there and you can do it until six today. But any of our students can reach us there at any time. Um, so there's the live chat. 
We have a Zoom room. So if you want face-to-face, -face, but maybe not physically face-to-face -face in the same room, um, you can use a, a Zoom room and talk to student care that way. And of course, we're still available by phone and our email as well. So info at apc.edu.au. Um, and so there's, we've really tried to think of all the ways in which we can support and help our students at this difficult time. Um, and uh, I think we've done a pretty good job of it. Uh, so, I mean, that's a quick introduction to our school. And um, if you are thinking of transferring to APC, you need to know the steps as to how to do it. Um, the process is quite simple. And to uh, tell you how that works, I'll introduce the General Manager of Admissions and Administration, Pam Siegel. Hello, Pam. Hi, Robbie. Thank you for that introduction. So, <clears throat> so you've now heard um, all the good reasons for joining us here at APC and English Unlimited. And the admission process is quite straightforward. So you will need to complete an application form and select the course. We have a little red dot flying around the screen there for you to show you where we're talking about. Um, our application form shows you the courses and the campuses that our courses usually operate at when we're in the face-to-face -face mode on campus. So you'll need to consider which campus you will study at for when we return to campus after COVID-19 restrictions. Um, it's also worth remembering that you must apply for a course or a package of courses that's not lower than the principal course on your current student visa. So if you choose a lower level course on the Australian Qualification Framework, um, then you'll probably need to apply for a new student visa. So if you're studying a diploma and an advanced diploma, you need to make sure that you're enrolling for the same level diploma and advanced diploma courses to keep your visa current. Um, so then you also need to provide us with a copy of your passport. And that's including that page with a beautiful photo of yourself. So uh, we need documented evidence of your current English level. But if you don't actually have documented evidence, you can take our English pre-arrival test, which we call a PAT, which is found on our APC website. Or you can take the PAT here on campus by appointment if you prefer to do that. We generally require upper intermediate English for the majority of our courses, but you'll need advanced English if you're thinking of studying tourism, hospitality and accounting courses, and also for tests all. So we need documented academic evidence as well that meets the particular course you've chosen to study. So that could be any qualification you've already completed here in Australia or your high school or university documents from home depending on the course you've chosen and the entry requirement for that. So it's quite straightforward so far. I think you'd agree, right? Now, remember that if you need help with this process or you have any questions, we have a team dedicated to helping you with your application who can speak to you uh, straight after this presentation. So moving on, we then want to know, uh, sorry, we then, we then want to know why you've chosen to study the course that you've selected and why at APC. And we've already given you lots of good reasons, well, Robbie certainly has, to choose APC, right? So this is the statement of purpose. Just an honest few paragraphs about your purpose. As I said, why you've chosen to study the particular course you selected and why APC. This SOP, as it's known, is important because it forms part of the evidence compiled to consider whether you're a genuine temporary entrant as a student visa holder. Now, if you've chosen to study graphic design, and there were quite a few of you I noticed on the poll, then we also need a sample of works or a portfolio before you'll be admitted to our graphic design courses. But there's lots of information about that on our website, so you can check there. If you've chosen to study TESOL because you want to become an English teacher, then you'll need to book an interview appointment through our admissions team. So if you provide all the correct documentation that we've mentioned there, your letter of offer will be issued within 24 hours of admissions receiving your application, whether that's come in through email, through our registrar or through Apply Now, which is on our website or via the live chat um, with our staff. Now I hear you asking, I'm partway through a course, what about the study I've already completed at another college perhaps? So that's a good question. You can apply for credit transfer of the units you've already studied. And if they match the units we offer in our APC programs, then we can credit those units from your study. 
So this will reduce the number of subjects that you're required to study within a particular qualification. And it will potentially though, reduce your enrollment length as well. To apply for credit transfer, we'll need a record of results or a statement of attainment of the study that you've completed from your previous college. If there's a delay in another college providing these transcripts to you, then we can provisionally accept information that you might be able to download from your student portal. However, you'll still have to provide us with the, the accurate documents when you do receive them. So this is only a provisional letter of offer that you would receive, but it doesn't hold up the process. So we believe that there's a lengthy time delay from some institutions, others are faster. So it just, uh, it just helps speed along the application process with us. You might also find this information from the USI website or portal. So you've all got a unique student identifier or USI as it's known, and this records all your study in Australia at all colleges and universities. And you can download the units you've studied from that portal and you could present that to us as an alternative as well. We'll then be able to arrange a study plan for you, depending on how many units are being credit transferred or not being credit transferred. So course durations at APC may differ from the course durations at other institutions. So this is why it's useful to also see your current COE, your confirmation of enrollment, so that we can determine the course lengths compared to those at APC. Our term structure is made up of four terms per year, and each term has nine weeks, followed by a three week break in between each term, except over Christmas and New Year, where there's a longer seven week break. Our next intake is term three, which commences on Monday, the 20th of July. Then term four starts on the 12th of October, followed by term one next year, which is the 1st of February, 2021. There's also midterm intakes for some courses, and these are the 17th of August during term three, and the 9th of November during term four. And finally, APC is a course progress institution. This means you must pass at least 50% of the subjects that your timetable to study in any given term to be deemed as making course progress. Thanks, Thanks Robbie. <laughs> Back to you in the studio, Robbie. Thanks, Pam. <laughs> All right. So um, that's the process. And, you know, I understand that that might be a lot of, I mean, it's quite a simple process, but there might be a lot of information to take all in one go. So I'll just remind you now that if at any time you would like to speak to someone from APC uh, who can really walk you through that step by step, you can go to apc.edu.au. And in the bottom right hand corner of the screen, you'll see a live chat function. You can talk to somebody there and they'll help walk you through that process. You can talk about specific documents or anything like that, that, that you might need. So, um, and also if you have any questions for us here, we've got a few people uh, who are quite senior, I suppose, at the college who can answer a lot of questions right now. There's the Q and A button at the bottom of your Zoom screen if you're watching on Zoom. Um, so uh, yeah, there's, there's lots of ways you can, you can ask questions now. Uh, and we'll get to them pretty soon. So before we finish up, uh, we'll go back to the fees once again. So these fees are for study undertaken for the rest of 2020. So from term one of 2021, just gonna be really clear about this because we don't wanna say the wrong thing. From term one of 2021, um, the fees will revert to their pre-COVID-19 levels. So these fees will depend on the course and the campus so uh, different courses, different campuses will usually have, have different prices. So rather than going through a big long list of them right now for you, um, if you want uh, details, again, just jump onto live chat and we'll, uh, we'll uh, have someone, you know, give you specific advice. Um, and uh, so when you enroll with us, we are particularly confident that you'll be happy with the virtual learning experience. It's something that was new for us actually, uh, doing everything live on Zoom. Um, and, uh, but we found that we've just got incredible feedback from students. Um, and if you, if you find, so we're very confident that you'll like it, but if you come and you enroll and you decide you, uh, that, you know, it's not for you, you have seven days. Uh, you, after seven days, if you decide you're not happy, you can, um, we'll give you a refund on any unused tuition fees. So there's no reason not to try. Um, so for tomorrow afternoon, uh, here in Sydney, between three and 5 p.m., uh, so this is just for those of you who are watching in Sydney, 
uh, you can come to our York Street campus uh, and get some, so that's at level five, 37 York Street. If you know Wynyard Station, the park above Wynyard Station, we're right across from the park at Wynyard Station. Um, you can come and get some help uh, enrolling. So you can bring your documents in, you can talk to someone face to face. Um, obviously we'll be doing it with some distancing protocols. Uh, on the screen there, you'll see a, uh, a little QR code, which you might not quite have time to snap. We'll put the link in the, in the chat as well for you. So you can make a booking to come and um, you can speak to someone, they'll walk you through every step of the enrollment process. Um, have a look at your documents, all that sort of thing. Um, so uh, if you are ready to apply, um, uh, if you're looking for a school where you will get a quality education, um, and where your trainers and the staff at the college will really truly care about you and helping you achieve your goals, not only academically, but in other areas of your life as well. I mean, we love, love, love to see happy, successful students who come to Australia and, you know, make, make a success of their time here. And, and we love playing a part in that. And um, it's something that the company has been that the school has been all about for the last 26 years. So um, I strongly recommend that if you're looking for a school like that, um, you reach out to us on the screen. Now you can see the two way, well, there are lots of ways you can apply, but the two key ways you can apply, both of them are at apc.edu.au. Uh, top right hand corner, what way is that? Top right hand corner for um, your, the apply now button. And that's just sort of takes you into an automate, uh, takes you into a form where you just put in all your details if you're comfortable doing it by yourself. If you would like some help, bottom right hand corner, there is the live chat function that I keep talking about and we, we like that one too. So um, uh, you can go there, talk to someone and they'll help you through step by step um, the documents you need and they'll get you going on your admissions process. So, um, Thank you very much. We are going to go into our Q&A session now. So I'll invite Rachel to say hello. And Rachel's been getting some questions in the Q&A uh, window, I think. Yes, I have. Thanks. Thank you, Robbie. And I'd just like to say thank you to everybody who has added all of these great questions, because I'm sure everyone's going to be finding these really useful. So the first question we have um, is from Michelle. And she's asking um, what the difference is between the discounted rates that we're currently offering and our normal rates. Um, do you feel uh, happy to answer that question, Robbie? Uh, yeah, I will. I mean, it's, it depends on the qualification and the course, uh, the qualification, the course and the location. So there are several things that, that come into play. So rather than giving out the specifics here, uh, I'll just point you towards our, um, the, the live chat, just jump in there and some will talk through with you individually about your individual situation and they will, um, give you everything that you need to, to make the right decision. Thanks, Robbie. Um, and also we've got another question regarding application fees and uh, course transfer fees, especially for students who are coming from schools that are currently closing down. So I think I'll give that one to Pam. Thank you, Rachel. Um, okay, we will waive uh, application fees. There are no transfer fees. So we will waive those application fees for students coming from other colleges. Um, we are currently doing that under our, uh, under our VLE and COVID-19 uh, tuition fee relief anyway. So um, yeah, we're happy to, to happy to waive that for them. Awesome, thank you. Here's another great question. Um, will um, a, a genuine temporary entry statement be enough uh, to provide as an SOP in our application process? If they've already created that for a visa application, can they use that in their SOP for us? Yeah, that's exactly, that's exactly what a, a statement of purpose is, yes. So they, they can use that, providing it does match the courses that they are going to study with us at APC. Mm -hmm. Okay, great. Um, we have quite a few more questions here. Um, what does the online learning look like? I think I'll give that one to Ron to answer. Thank you. Thank you, Rachel. What does it look like? Um, it looks very much like what you're looking at now in the context of it being a, a Zoom room, but we've tried to to mix it up a little bit. We've tried not to have it look the same for every class that you enter. And so when you enter your lecture, which is the main contextual and concept lecture that, that's given to you, where the core information about the subject 
uh, is, is presented to you. There it looks like uh, very much like this. It might have a slideshow or two. It might have a video. We've had lecturers split the screen, so they're doing both. They're showing the video and they're there as well talking to it. Um, so, and we also use whiteboard features. So there's, there's very many features that are used to make it a very descriptive sort of environment. If you're learning software, like you might be in accounting or in travel or in design, then the screen could be split between the presenter and the software screen directing you through the software so that you're getting a really rich and full experience. The tutorial is a bit different. The tutorial is to a much smaller group and we tailor this to the group sizes. So if there's a large number of students, we'll split the group into two or into three. And the, the trainer is really interested in what your difficulties are, what, your, uh, what, what issues you have with the lecture, which bits you understood, which bits you didn't understand. So we go a bit deeper into all of that. And also that is where the trainer will come into the assessment tasks and explain them to you, ask everybody if there's any questions, a bit like we are doing now, and, and manage your expectations in terms of understanding what's expected from you. That's really important to us. I think, uh, uh, Rachel, that answers the question. I hope it answers the question. That was great. Thanks, Ron. Um, Pam, I have quite a few questions here from several students saying that they are at another college at the moment. And what, what would the process be to change to APC? Because there are different circumstances if, if their other uh, school is actually open at the moment or if that school is closing down. Can you talk about that, please? Yeah. So the process that I described before, Rach, was um, basically for students who uh, have had a college close on them or are actually free to move. If they're currently studying at another college and wish to change over to study with us at APC or English Unlimited, you will be required um, to obtain a release from your college um, if that college is still open. They need to release you so that we can then issue um, your confirmation of enrolment. So all the same process as I described before, same details, same documents, but you'll just also need to uh, get a release from the college that you're at. Great, thank you. That, yeah, that that really oh, yeah, great answer. Can students start in July 2020 if they are still overseas? I'll give that one to you, Pam. Yeah, they, they can. Um, because of our virtual learning environment, we've got a lot of students who are currently overseas. Um, they got stranded there, unfortunately. They were away for a break. Uh, everybody tried to get back when COVID-19 shutdown started. Um, so we've got a lot of students currently um, studying with us who are offshore overseas in their home countries. Um, and if the time difference doesn't match the actual lecture sessions, you can always refer, as Ron mentioned, um, to the actual recordings, because there's recordings of every session uh, in either your Omnium or Google Classroom. Um, they can start the course if they're offshore as well. Um, we have got students enrolling to start, um, assuming the intention is that they are going to come to Australia. Uh, when it comes to the visa, they might wish to um, just hold off with the visa application so we can enrol as a distance non-student visa holder to start with and, um, and then issue the COE uh, for maybe term four when things get a little bit more uh, definite and definitive about flights opening and borders opening so that they can fly in and you know, they can apply for their visa to fly into the country. Thank you, Pam. Um, I believe Ron has an extra point to add as well. Yeah, I, I, I wouldn't mind. Thank you, Pam, for that, because that really does cover it. I was just going to add a little bit also on the notion of uh, the lectures being available and they can always use the recording, as Pam said. And the other part of it is we're using the um, Google and Omnium classroom platforms. And so if students have got questions that relate to the, um, to the lectures and their unable to, to come into a, a, a synchronised room, into a room that is at a time that suits them, then they're, they're able to ask their, um, their, their lecturer all the questions they want over the normal chat rooms that are in those classrooms. And they'll find that the communications is, is, are really good. And so don't worry, if you're overseas, we will support you. We'll make sure you have a really good experience, a good learning experience. Thanks, Ron. I actually have another question for you. Um, this question's about what a normal week looks like um, in terms of how many days 
um, of, of lectures and how that compares to face-to-face -face study. So how many days on campus, how many subjects do you have per term, et cetera? Well, yeah, and the way I would answer that is um, in some respects, it looks very similar to the on-campus experience, but in other respects, it's completely different. It's similar in that um, the class presentations, usually you will have a, a lecture and you will have a, um, a tutorial session on, on the one day. And the idea is that the, uh, the tutorial session follows on from the lecture. So the things you've you learnt, you then have a chance to discuss them. Being a full-time study, uh, you have two subjects per week. And so it means that usually it's two days. So you might come into class on a Monday and a Tuesday or a Monday and a Wednesday. And that will happen on the VLE environment as well. And we try to make them successive days. And then we have um, the online subject. We offer one subject per, per, per term online. And that subject has a tutorial. Again, if you're on campus, you would attend that tutorial if you felt you needed to. And in the case of the VLE environment, the virtual environment, again, there is a tutorial for that, a two hour tutorial every week. And if you've got questions about that subject or about the assessment task, you can always join the Zoom room and on your timetable, we will be giving you all of the Zoom rooms that are for your classes. So you will always have a, a really good uh, record of where you need to be and when you need to be there. Does that respond to that all right, uh, Thanks, Yeah, so what we're trying to do is create a similar environment online for our students. Um, in our typical face-to-face -face delivery, we do have normally two or three contact days per week. Mm. But now that we're in this VLE environment, um, there's a lot more flexibility when it comes to when you'll be watching those lectures online. You can do them um, outside of the normal schedule times as well. Okay, we do have um, another question about our interior design course. Um, how long mm. is the interior design course, the diploma and the advanced diploma at APC, Ron? Um, right. Well, the the diploma is one year, and um, again, it's a, so it's four terms, two subjects per term, and it's one one year. And then the advanced diploma is an additional year on top of that, so it's two years to complete the advanced diploma. Great. Thank you, Ron. Um, I have another question. I think this one should be for you, Pam. Um, Students coming from a school that is closing have been told that they've been given three months to enroll in another college. And the question is whether they can wait to enroll in October if they get accepted into APC or whether they need to go for the next intake date. Good question. Thanks, Rach. Um, they will have this, I believe, their COE will be cancelled approximately four weeks after the closure of the college. Um, so they will be without a confirmation of enrolment within that time. I would not recommend leaving it right to the very end of that three months um, because you need to find, you know, the right course, make sure you go through the application process. Um, I think we'd have to look at it individually as to what course it is you're studying, but uh, yeah, you have, you have been given three months to enrol in another college. I might jump in real quick. I think October is five months away. Um, <laughs> yeah, from the, from the 22nd of May or whatever the date of a co college closure is. So, yeah, I mean, it's three months would be June, July, August. Yeah, you wouldn't be able to do it till, till October. You'd have to join July. You're right, Robbie. Thank you. Haven't got my calendar in front of me. <laughs> so, yeah, you would have to join the 20 July, July course. Okay, another question here. Um, how many students are typically in a class, Ron? Um, it depends on what, uh, what area, of course, um, and there is quite a, a bit of variation. Um, but it, depending on which subject you're studying in design, we, um, we try to limit classes between 15 and 20. In tourism and hospitality, they're quite small. In some of the business disciplines, the lectures are rather large groups, but the tutorials, we always try to keep down around the 20 to 25 students per group, because as I've said previously, these are the important groups where the, the teacher is trying to 
interact with each student, understand what their needs are in terms of them really being able to make their way through the learning process. So I would say on a one-to-one -one basis in the smaller non-lecture times, we're talking about groups of 20 to 25 per, per subject. And I'll just add on to that, I think, if, if the question was referring to, it might have been referring to English, if it was referring to English, even in the VLE, the class sizes are the same as, as they would you be on campus. So 15, 16, I think is the average at the moment. Um, so yeah, something to consider. I know in, in an English class, it's, class size is, is really important. And um, yeah, our VLE classes are, are the same size as our on-campus classes. Thank and can I add one more point? Mm -hmm. on, on campus, when we are on campus, our classes aren't generally face-to-face -face more than about 35 students at the max. I know some other colleges have a lot you know, higher numbers in their face-to-face -face classrooms, but we don't, uh, we don't operate like that on a face-to-face -face basis. Um, can I add one other thing, please, Rachel? Um, just one other point about, uh, about ex you know, when the students can join at APC. Um, You've got to keep in mind about when your current visa actually ends. So you're talking in, if you're talking about waiting till July, you need to make sure um, that your current visa doesn't end before the new course end. And you have to be mindful about the subsequent visa fee if you're extending your visa. All right. Um, yeah. Um, yeah, sorry. That's, yeah, that's, that's probably the best of what I'm saying. <laughs> no, that's great. Thanks, Pam. Um, I do have another question about assessments. So what is the assessment schedule like? Is there one assessment due each week? Ron? Uh, the answer to that is definitely not. Um, that, 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 that is way too much assessment. Uh, we would like to think that our assessment is, is deeply embedded in the learning process. And so uh, in most subjects, um, there are either two or three assessments, depending on how long the subject is. In the case of design, I might give that as an example. In most cases, there are three assessments over a nine week period. In the case of our block subjects in business, there are two assessments over a four or five week period. Um, we see very much that assessment is part of your learning process. So the reason you're doing assessment is for us to measure whether you gained the learning, but it's also to help you with your learning. We don't like to see assessment uh, as a brick wall you arrive at. We rather like to see assessment as part of that learning process. So th I, I think that answers it, Rachel. Thank you, Ron. Thank you. Pam, I have a question about your favourite course, the Diploma of Travel and Tourism <laughs> Management. Um, yes. The student is asking if it's possible to get a subject schedule for the course and also a lesson time schedule before enrolment. Sure. Yep, that's, that's not a problem. Um, the Travel and Tourism course, the Certificate 3 runs for three terms, which is about nine months, and our diploma uh, will run for a total of 18 months. So, um, yeah, I, we can provide that. That's, that's not a problem. Yep. Great, thank you. I'd say direct into the live chat again. I'd yeah, say. Again, live chat, yeah, obviously, Robbie. <laughs> <laughs> We're getting um, quite a few questions from students saying, my school isn't releasing me. Who can I speak to about getting assistance with being released from my current school? That would be the ombudsman. Mm -hmm. Can you give more details about that, Pam? Uh, we can provide it through live chat. Mm -hmm. um, if, there is, if, if you have applied uh, to your current college and you wish to transfer to another college because you're looking at a different course or maybe because the tuition fees, uh, whatever the reason is, um, you know, and, and you're not getting released. By the way, it's not actually a letter of release. It's just a matter of the college releasing so that when we issue our new COE for you um, in the government system called PRISMS, we are allowed to issue that COE, all right? Um, so if they don't provide you with um, a release, then they have to provide you with a letter of refusal in writing as to why they refused. And then you could take that to the Ombudsman, the International Student Ombudsman. Okay. And we can provide that, that information in the live chat. 
And we have some extra information here um, from somebody here at APC who's saying the institution or the school must provide a letter of rejection with a clear outline with the reasoning for that rejection. So you should be receiving that from your college when you, when you apply to, for another school. Um, I, I do have some extra information from somebody who is at a school uh, that's closing down. Apparently they've received information from the school saying that they need to apply to another college within three months of the 25th of May and that there's a clear distinction between application versus enrollment date. So in other words, the student has um, is under the impression that they just need to apply within that three month period, but not necessarily start. Do you, do you know anything about that, Pam? I'm just looking at that question. Uh, I think the students in that cohort need clarity about application versus enrollment date. So yeah. they want to know from our, well, I mean, I suppose from our perspective, I'm not, that might be better for you, Pam, as the general manager of admissions, but Typically speaking, you're, um, yeah, you're not supposed to have big gaps in your study. So, I mean, obviously, it's, it's not a typical situation right now, but Pam, you might want to add a bit more information there. Generally, there's not supposed to be more than eight weeks between study periods when you're on a student visa. But um, the circumstances when a college closes probably allows for longer than that. But um, I'm, just a, I'm just trying to find the question that you're talking about. Um, yeah, I might need I, I might need to come back to come back to you on that unless someone else here. Sorry, I've just lost the question. Yeah, like we said before, these are very um, particular questions, and I think they're best addressed by live chat, and we can then yeah. forward that that question to the relevant uh, person at EPC to help you. Um, just with some extra information about a school, for example, that is not giving you that release letter. Um, it's, it's a requirement for them to give you the outcome of your application for release. And if they don't give you that letter, that, that reasoning why they're not uh, releasing you, that's when you can contact the ombudsman. And more information can be found on um, the Department of Home Affairs website. Yeah. They can go to the ombudsman with or without that letter of refusal. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, we do have another comment here saying that uh, a school that is closing down isn't releasing students if they are owing fees. And once again, I think um, these questions would be, would be best addressed in live chat. Okay, I think that is um, all of the questions that we've received so far. Robbie? Yeah, all right. Um, so I'd like to thank everyone for, for coming and, and participating in the in the webinar, whether you are here with us on Zoom or if you're looking on face, if you're what, looking, if you're watching, I'm an English teacher. If you're watching on Facebook, um, it's really nice that you're uh, that you've joined us today. Um, again, one last time. Uh, a lot of these cases, it's it's, it's very individual, and so I, I really, again, strongly recommend that you come and speak to us uh, online. Go to apc.edu.au uh, and go to the live chat. Uh, in the bottom right hand corner of the screen. If you want to apply, you can go to apply now, which is in the top right of the screen. Um, and also tomorrow on campus, you can come, it's from three to 5 p.m. here at the York Street campus. So that is at level 537 York Street. It's just right next to Wynyard Station, opposite the park. Uh, I'll be here, there'll be a few other people here to help you. And um, we can add, again, go into some of these, these sort of deeper details. Um, here you go, you have another poll, courtesy of Rachel. <laughs> Sorry. Um, that's all right. Uh, well, no, here you go. It would be really helpful for us if you could um, answer some of these questions. Um, any feedback that you have about the session at all, if there's uh, you know, more information that you would like or anything like that, then you know, feel free to get in touch. Uh, you can send us an email, info at apc.edu.au. You can speak to us on live chat as I, <laughs> I feel like a salesman, live chat, live chat. Um, <laughs> You can speak to us there too. Um, and uh, yeah, I think we'll be putting more of these webinars on in future as well. So um, keep your eyes and ears, I'd say to the ground, but I suppose to your screens because that's where we'll be contacting you. So um, yeah, thank you so much for participating. Um, and uh, I hope, I really truly hope to see you here studying with us at APC.